Check, check, one, two, check, check, one, two. So, hopefully this is streaming okay. Let's see if we are. Hand up, let's see if you guys can see me. Checking here. I think we're good. Anyways, so if you guys are wondering why it is um, 1 a.m. and I'm doing a live stream, or 2 a.m. almost, um, it's because this guy from a competitor, um, I'm not going to mention his name because I don't want to basically give him any sort of shout out or anything, but he has been basically using my product in our name to try to sell his products and he tested our product by literally zip tying it to the hot end of a printer completely crooked didn't use our firmware which as you guys all know we spent a lot of time tuning the motion settings to work best with our sensors and with the probes and everything and the printers so what i'm trying to say is it wasn't a fair test so what i'm going to do right here live um, not an edited video. So this is broadcasting live to YouTube and will be archived to go back to um, is show you guys the accuracy. I've got three printers right now that aren't working. Two of them have my first generation Easy ABL, which are off the shelf sensors and not the custom ones we're using now. Uh, they still get really, really good repeatability, but I wanted to throw them into the mix to show you guys that when you're using our firmware and the sensors, everything works great. And ABL needs 0 0.05 millimeters of accuracy in terms of repeatability to actually produce good leveling results. So I'm going to switch over here. I'm going to have two shots. We're going to have one here, which are the uh, Octo Print windows uh, for the three machines. You can see their beds are heated, and I'm going go to I'm going to go ahead and home them, and then switch over to their camera views, so you can see that they're all homing here. So they're all the same machines. So I've got a custom, two custom built machines and an Ender 2, and the Ender 2 is running our unified firmware. The other two custom machines are running a modified version of that since obviously they can't use the unified firmware. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to switch over to my right monitor here, and I'm going to once again go ahead and home them all just so you guys can see me sending the commands. And if I go back to my history here, there we go. We got an M48 test. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send these M48 tests here, and this will probe the middle of the bed. 10 times and then spit out a result. So I'm going to go ahead and send these away right now. And I'm going to show you that these printers are doing the probe test. You can see them coming back with their results already. And you can see them here doing their probe test. Okay, and we're at 5 of 10, 6 of 10. And these are all capacitive probes. Like I said, the, uh, the, the two custom machines are using the first gen. Um, they all just finished. We got 0 .0007 on the one custom machine with the first gen sensor, 0 .003 with the other one, and 0 .0008. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just, let's just queue up one, two, three, repeatability test. And you'll see they're all going to get accuracy in the thousands as long as nothing mechanically fails on these machines. These machines are very well dialed in. They're built properly. And I'm going to switch over here so you guys can see. They're all probing. There's no trickery here. I am just trying to show that what I'm selling actually works and actually produces good results because he's pulling things out of his ass um, saying that, well, these sensors are used to detect humidity, so everything affects them. Right now, I have my window open. I'm in Chicago. It's about 40 degrees out. I have this on because I'm cold. Um, and there's a draft in there, there's fans running. So there's a lot of air circulating in this room. And you can see we're getting really good results on these sensors. Okay, that one got 0 .00154, 002322, 0 .000970. The point I'm trying to make here, he made a 30 minute video just showing repeatability tests that he wasn't even running. He has no idea how to use the firmware. He has no idea how to set it up. Um, he had a guy remote it into his computer literally to run these m48 tests the stuff i'm doing right now right in front of you guys and you can see again we're getting really good results so this is a first gen sensor uh, which is the orange tip ones which were off the shelf and we're getting under 0 0.001 so it's 
So under one one thousandth of a millimeter. Now the AM8 has my oldest sensor on it. This sensor is in a hundred degree bed temps all the time and the ambient temperature is 50 Celsius. And I believe the one real, bleh, I believe the reason this one's fluctuating so much is because the bed temp is dropping. Um, whereas these are staying pretty consistent. But again, here, this one just came back 0 0.000733. This one should be done in a sec here. This is my Ender 2. 0.000872. So how much accuracy do you, do you really want? And here's my first gen. This is literally the first kit I built before I had any intention of selling them. This is just using a cheap sensor I bought from Amazon. And I'm getting 0 0.001. He's arguing that because he got 0 0.002 with an inductive sensor and a micro switch, that that is infinitely better than what my kits produce. And we're literally talking thousandth of a millimeter. Now, if it was 0.01 or 0.02, which is a very large number compared to a thousandth of a millimeter, then yeah, go ahead, rake me across the coals. But typically on well-tuned machines, my kits produce results in the thousandth of a millimeter. And that's consistent across all things. If you're not getting very good accuracy and you're having problems, you can contact us. We'll work through mechanical and electrical issues that you have with your printer to get them sorted out so our kit can work properly. And that's the kind of level of support we do. So to have someone going across all these Facebook groups and basically using our name to try to bolster themselves up to drive sales on a product that's not only really, really expensive, it's $100 and you don't even get a sensor or a switch with it, um, but there's also other drawbacks there. And if you want to go look at the comparison, we put a comparison table on the website. If you go to products and services, go to Easy ABL, there's a comparison table. We've added numbers and results from multiple different sensors from other solutions. And the one I'm talking to, we refer to on there as B Stinger because I don't want to get into any sort of legal trouble of quoting his actual product name. But you can see here, um, the results are great on these sensors we use. Um, I, I don't understand what all the fuss is about. I don't understand why he's got to try and rake me over the coals. But this is live, it's two o'clock in the morning, and I'm doing this to basically protect my reputation um, because I'm tired of getting fired at, essentially. So there we go, there we have it. I'm gonna end this stream. I think I've proven my point, and this will serve as documentation, and people can reference this now when he tries to go on his tirades.